So today we will see about blood. So blood is a component of cardiovascular system. So cardiovascular system consists of three components. What are those? Blood, blood, blood heart, and blood vessels. Together, these three components forms the cardiovascular system. Now, we'll discuss about blood. Blood is the only fluid connective tissue present in the human body. Why we call it as a fluid connective tissue? Because, because, because it has the capacity to flow. flow. Okay. Anything which is having the ability to flow is known as a fluid. Since blood is having the ability to flow, as it is flowing through the blood vessels, we call it as a fluid connective tissue. Now, moving to the functions of blood. There are mainly three functions of the blood. The first function is regulation. Regulation. What do you mean by regulation? Regulation means maintaining the normal functioning of the body. How? For example, by transportation. Okay? Regulation by transportation. Transportation is again another type of function of blood. Now, hormones. Hormones are nothing but the proteins which are synthesized by endocrine glands and released into the blood. Now, blood transport these hormones to the site of its action, thereby maintaining homeostasis or regulating the normal functioning of the body. Example of any hormone you can give me? Antidiuretic hormone, which is produced by? For example, insulin. Insulin is one of the hormone which is produced by beta cells of pancreas. It is released into the blood. Now, it is carried to gastrointestinal tract where it breaks down the complex sugar molecules into simple glucose. Now, this glucose is utilized by your body and maintains your energy levels. So, it is regulating your energy levels. Second one, it is regulating your body temperature. How? By transferring heat to different parts of the body. For example, during uh, summer, Okay, when you work out, when you do some physical activity, the body temperature increases. Yes. So there is more production of heat inside your body because of which you start feeling more, uh, you know, heat, you start sweating. Now to overcome that, the body has to lose that extra heat. How to lose that extra heat? By help of a blood. The blood contains plasma which is the watery portion. Now this plasma has the ability to absorb the heat produced by the body. Once it absorbs the heat, it transports the heat to the surface of the body where the skin, once the heat comes in contact with the skin and as you are sweating during summer, the heat is evaporated along with the sweat. As a result of which, you feel cool and at the same time, you are losing the heat. Okay. Next, transportation. One example we have taken. Endocrine gland, exocrine gland. They release the secretion and blood helps in transporting there to the target organs. Similarly, oxygen and carbon dioxide. You are inhaling oxygen. So this oxygen comes in contact with which blood vessel? Pulmonary artery. It comes in contact with pulmonary artery. This pulmonary artery big, uh, takes in oxygen and transport it to the heart. Now this oxygen is transported through pulmonary vein to different parts of the organs. Organs. One minute here. I said wrong. Pulmonary vein. It carries deoxygenated blood from heart to lungs for exhaling carbon dioxide. Okay, so don't get confused between an artery and a vein. Okay. 
Now coming to the next third function is by protection. What do you mean by protection? Helping you maintain your immune responses. Okay. For example, yes, very good. Platelets. Platelets are nothing but one of the components of blood. These platelets, they form the clot or the clump in which in which organ? Inside the ruptured, at the site of ruptured blood vessel. So there is no further loss of the blood. So it is preventing your body or preventing from excess loss of blood or hemorrhage, severe hemorrhage. The second one is WBC. WBCs they perform phagocytosis and prevent the blood uh, prevent the body from diseases and pathogens. So the main three functions of blood are regulation, protection, and transportation. Okay. Now let's move to what are the different types of blood groups. Now which cell in the blood is responsible for determining your blood group? RBCs or also known as erythrocytes. Now on the surface of these RBCs or erythrocytes you have a special type of glycolipid or glycoprotein which is known as antigen. Specifically we call it as agglutinogen or also known as isoantigens. Okay? So we call it, these antigens, we call them as agglutinogens or isoantigens. Now these are present on the surface of RBCs. Now antibodies. Also known as agglutinins, these are present in the plasma. plasma. Okay, so together you have antigen as well as antibody in your blood. Fine. Now consider a case of a person where his blood group is A. Suppose if a person's blood group is A, that means his RBC is containing antigen A and antibody. Now the peculiar thing is happening why there is no hemolysis in human beings naturally because here we have antibody B and anti B antibody and antigen A. They are not compatible. That means there is no chance of antigen antibody reaction. Suppose in case if a person blood group is A and I am transfusing that person with another blood group B. Now what happens? Now this blood group or the surf, um, surface of RBC contain antigen A. Now the new blood group has RBCs which is containing antigen B. Now here this is in case of RBCs. Now in case of plasma, here we have anti-B antibody and anti-A antibody. So now there are chances that this antibody may react with the antigen A and antigen uh, antibody B reacts with antigen B. So this together we call it as antigen antibody antibody reaction. Now what happens during this antigen antibody reaction? It causes the activation of complement proteins.
en plasma. So once the complement proteins are activated in the plasma, they cause rupturing of RBCs of donor. Donor is the person who has donated the blood. Okay. Once this occurs, it causes the release of hemoglobin. Now this release hemoglobin moves to all the parts of the body, especially in the kidneys, it causes clogging of filtration membranes, whereby there is no proper filtration of blood. Okay, that's one case. That's why any technician in hospital, before administering the blood, they have to go with typing and cross matching of the blood groups. So next topic is typing and cross matching. Now in this typing of the blood group as we will be doing in the lab, we take one drop of blood of a recipient. Recipient means the one who is going to receive the blood from another person who is known as donor. Now here, one drop of blood is taken and it is mixed with anti-serums. Okay. For example, if I take one drop of blood of a recipient blood and I am adding anti-serum, anti-A, anti-serum. Similarly, I am taking the same person's blood and adding anti-B, anti-serum. Similarly, I am taking the blood of the same person and I am adding anti-RH, anti-serum. So, anti-RH, we can call it as anti-B. Yes. Now I need to check whether antigen antibody reaction has taken place or not. How to check it? Just by visualizing the blood, we can simply say that any clot formation has taken place or not. If there is formation of a clot or clump in the blood, then we say that yes, antigen antibody reaction has taken place. For example, if the blood and anti-A anti-serum when they are mixed and if there is a clot then I can say that both uh, the person's blood group is A because it is clumping with anti-serum A and if it is clumping again with anti-serum D I can say that this person is having RH antigen on the surface of RBC so his blood is positive. So together we can say his blood is A positive. Now what I have to do when I am selecting the donor for this recipient. I need to check that the person who is donating blood should have the same blood group which is A positive. I cannot give the blood from a person who is having a blood group B positive. Because if I give antigen antibody reaction leading to the formation of clump or agglutinogen, hemolysis and all those events takes place. Okay, so it's very important to typing the blood groups. Now what is cross matching? Once I have decided the donor and the recipient, I'll take the serum of the donor and mix it with the blood of the recipient and check whether any clot formation is there or not. If there is no clump or no clot, then the <coughs> cross matching is done. The matching is exact. That means both the bloods are compatible or matched. So we can go with the transfusion. Okay? So based on these things, we have different types of blood groups or blood types. Basically, you can say that there are 24 blood groups and 
more than 100 types of antigens. <coughs> on the surface of RBCs, but we are not discussing this because we are concentrating on two major blood groups which are RH blood group and ABO blood group. Now when you are considering ABO blood group, please remember there are two types of antigens which are going to be present on the surface of RBCs. Those are our antigen A and antigen B. So if a person's RBC contain only A antigen, then the blood group is A. A. And if there is only B antigen, then the blood group is B. B. And if there is both A and B antigen, then the blood group is A. B. And if there are no antigens, then the blood group is O. o. Okay. So this is based on the ABO blood group system. Now coming to the RH blood group system, there is a special antigen which is known as RH antigen which is present on the surface of RBC. Okay. Now if this antigen is present and if you expose it to an anti RH antibody, then there is clump. Okay, then if there is a clump, you can say that the person's blood group is RH positive, and if there is no clump, then it is RH negative. Now combine both the systems here. If a person's blood group is A, that means on the surface of our RBC there is antigen, antigen A is present. And if it is RH positive, that, that means along with antigen A, there is antigen RH. RH. So the person's blood group is A positive. If there is no RH antigen, then it is A negative. So on. Alright. But one peculiar thing about AB antigen is, they, uh, AB blood group is, they, pro, they contain both antigen A and antigen B on the surface of RBC. But they do not contain antibodies A and B in the plasma. So remember, if there is antigen A on the RBC, there is antibody B in the plasma. Very good. And if there is antigen B, then antibody A in the plasma. And in case of AB, there is no antibody. And in case of no antigen, there is no A and B antibodies. Now, if I give a person with A and B blood group, if a person is having blood group A and B, he can receive the blood from both A and B. So they are called as universal recipients because they don't contain antibodies. So there is no means of reaction between antigen and antibodies. And here the blood group O, why it is called as universal donors if any person is having blood group O, is called as universal donor because they don't contain antigens. So there is no point of reaction between antibodies. Fine? Everything is clear. You know why we call it as RH blood group? Because of the presence of RH antigen and the other name is rhesus monkey. The antigen was first discovered in rhesus monkey because of which it is given RH blood group. What are the other types of blood group? Kid blood group. Lewis blood group. Lewis blood group. There are different blood group systems. But the two major blood groups are AB and RH. Okay? So before transfusion, you need to go with blood matching and blood typing. Okay? So everything is clear or anyone is having any doubts? No. So let's stop it here? Yes. Yes.
Now I want me to continue. No. 